Barnaby Jones, a Quinn Martin production, starring Buddy Ebsen. Also starring Lee Merriweather, Mark Shera. With guest stars Marshall Colt, Jeannie Fitzsimmons, James Houghton, Peter McLean, Beeson Carroll. Barry Jenner. Tonight's episode, The Protectors. Would you believe it? We're the last ones here. Well, it goes with the territory, Frank. Well, I'm gonna call it a night. Why don't you join me for a drink? Never on Thursdays. It's my one night to catch up. Besides, our bid on this government contract is due tomorrow. That's what I wanted to talk to you about. Over a martini. Charlie, don't you think we're going in way too low? You look after the engineering. I'll worry about the bidding. Okay. You're calling the shots? Frank, on your way out, turn on the alarm, will you? Safe soap and uh, some money in it. Two thousand. Go ahead, take it. No, you are coming with us quietly, or you die on the spot. Now let's go. I know. I know. Listen, if this is a kidnapping, uh, I am insured, but my company won't pay a dime unless I'm alive. You want to stay that way and move? <laughs> Listen, two men are just trying to kidnap me. Uh, I, I don't know, a windbreaker, leather jacket, a couple of see-through masks. Yes, pistols. You heard him. Up against the wall. Spread those legs. Let's go. There's some ID in my coat pocket. Uh, inside. Come on, let's go. Barnaby. Hello, John. Been years. 
be from the California Meridian Insurance said you were out here working for Abbott. This wouldn't be your fine, upstanding son, Steve McShane, would it? It would. Steve, this is Barnaby Jones. Pleased to meet you, sir. I'm sorry if we were a little rough out front. It's all right. The last I heard of you, you were carrying on your father's career in the police department. That's right. Yeah, I had to ask him to resign. I needed him in the organization. What's your specialty, son, besides collecting guns? Uh, I'm a driver, sir. The best. You should have been born with wheels instead of feet. Sorry about that. I'll uh, get back out front. We're installing some electronic surveillance equipment out front. It's not operational yet. You know, there are a lot of millionaires around. Why do you suppose they picked Abbott? Oh, hard to say. Could be they know about the millions in kidnapped insurance the company has on him. Makes for a quick payoff. Well, now that his guard's up, uh, wouldn't you think that they would drop him and pick a new victim? Well, they spent a lot of time planning this, Mr. Jones. In our experience, guys that go that far don't give up easily. Uh, I better get back on the job, will you excuse me? How is Abbott standing up under the pressure? Oh, uh, what pressure? He's Mr. Casual. I'm getting a migraine trying to map out changes in his basic life pattern that he'll go along with. Oh, Mr. Abbott. This is Barnaby Jones, California Meridian, sent him over. Now, they said they would keep this under wraps if I hired a security firm. Now they're bringing more people into it. My company is going to sustain a serious loss if one word of this gets out. Mr. Abbott, you can rely on my using the utmost discretion. So if I get in your way, just holler. Well, that's just what I'm talking about, Barnaby. I mean, well, this is our kind of ball game. Aren't you kind of out of your league? Maybe you're right, John. Maybe I have fallen behind at times, but uh, maybe I can learn something from your people. Uh, new angles, if you don't mind. Yes, I guess you can. Fine place you have here, Mr. Abbott. Well, I uh, suppose I should show you around. Yes, it's driving me crazy. I think I'll uh, go into town if someone take a look at it. I'll go with you. Mr. Jones, this is my daughter, Kathy. How do you do? And her husband, Alan Rogers. How do you do? Would you like a drink? Well, yes, thank you. Uh, you don't happen to have any lemonade, do you? Just so happens we do. Hi, I'm Lauren Abbott. How do you do? My wife. <laughs> Mr. Jones is with the insurance company. They're determined to protect me. Or rather, their money. I still think you'd be safer fishing for Marlin in Hawaii till this thing blows over. Charlie, maybe Alan's right. Besides, this town's dead right now. Hawaii sounds delicious. I recommend that you sit tight. McShane's outfit can put a screen around you here, but if you go somewhere else, you're an open target. You're all missing the point. Teletex Electronics is in line for a couple of fat contracts. People don't buy a company, they buy me. When I'm out of town, Teletex is out of business. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. Are you Barnaby Jones? Yes, I am. I'm Kim Stratton. Mr. How McShane you said you were coming by. I hope you don't mind. Uh, I haven't noticed you got a plus magnetic reading. Right, the intruders opened this door and one other with an electromagnetic pick. It's an exotic piece of hardware. They penetrated two doors? Right, they entered here and they got into Abbott's suite through an inner door. They must have known that this room was unoccupied, which means that they could get in before the alarm was set and wait for Abbott who was alone next door. That's very clever. Yeah, I see what you mean. Boy, they had this place cased. Or uh, they had inside information. Why do you say that? No reason, except I don't like to overlook any possibilities. Well, it's possible, I guess, but McShane is only interested in hard facts. <laughs> this office is my last hope. Abbott's suite is squeaky clean. <laughs> Mr. Jones, this is Mr. Abbott's partner, Frank Bishop. Mr. Bishop? Mr. Jones? I understand it was you who personally arranged the policies for Mr. Abbott. That's correct. Charlie's a perfect target for the kind of executive kidnapping that makes headlines every day. I'm not going to sit here and see this company go into hock for millions in ransom. 
And it also must be nice to know that the insurance company has plenty of money on hand to arrange your partner's quick release. Yes, of course. There's that, too. Nice touch. <laughs> Thanks. But no prints. Mr. Abbott said that they were wearing gloves. I understand you spent two years in the police forensic lab. Must have given the boys a May 1 competition. Well, the lab's always been an all-male stronghold, and they never let me forget it. So, when Mr. McShane offered me my own lab, I didn't have to take a vote on it. Has there been anyone in this room since the attempt on Mr. Abbott? No, Mr. McShane told me to lock it. Cigarette filter? Yes, a little tobacco, too. Smells Turkish. Probably a European cigarette. I'm sure a lot of people that work here smoke. Yes, I'm certain of that, but uh, they also probably use the ashtrays that are provided for that purpose. Somebody tried to scatter this one out the window. You are pretty sharp, Mr. Jones. Maybe you'd like to go over Abbott Suite yourself. No, I've been watching you work, and I'm sure it would be a waste of time. But I would like to be around when you examine the things we found. It's a date. Your lab or mine. This microscope really details the shoe scrapings you took from that door. I'll send our chemical analysis over to one of my ex-chums at the PD lab. Now, he'll be able to trace the commercial source of the polish and stain. Oh, that's the bell on the drying chamber. Your test materials are ready. This saliva test indicates that whoever smoked that cigarette had type baby blood. Hey, that'll help narrow the field if we can find a suspect. Well, folks, how we doing? Any luck? A little. I'll have a report on your desk in half an hour. You said KC was going to convert Abbott's sedan into an armored car. I'd sure like to see how it's done. Well, let's go. The armored car shop's right out back. Special tire? Yeah, puncture proof. KC calls them uh, run flats because they're filled with foam. Where'd you find KC? Oh, stunt driving for one of the studios. Before that, he won a pile of gold medals on off-road racing until he had one too many crack-ups. His left leg's full of pins and plates. What you working on? Got me. What are you working on, Casey? Working up these high intensity lamps. Seen them blind in revenue or in broad daylight. It's armored? Uh, no, sir. That's a solid plate with fiberglass webbing. We even got the bullet resistant glass. That stopped direct gunfire? Everything except bazookas and rocket launchers. Of course, I don't encourage testing it, so I lay in a special power plant. What's the horsepower? 425. Super powered. McShane. Dad, Mr. Abbott insists on keeping his golf date tomorrow. No, the pattern's too regular. They could hit him on the road or on the course. Can't you talk him out of it? Not a chance. All right, hold on. We need Abbott's car for tomorrow morning. Can do? Yeah, well, I'll need a big roll of green. I mean, I, I gotta hire more crew, the best. Uh, whatever it takes. All right, I'm coming over, Steve. Now, tell Abbott I want to talk to him. All right. I'm sorry to give you a hard time, Steve, but I do more work on the golf course than I do in the office. Look, one of the men I'm teeing off with tomorrow is the chairman of the Wallace Aircraft. There's a big contract on the line. could you at least change the time? You don't play every week, but when you do, it's always 7 a.m. I play early, so I won't blow a whole work day. Besides, if I ask those other guys to switch, they may cancel out, and that's a risk I can't afford to take. Kathy is going to drive me into town to have someone look at my cast. Is there anything you want me to do in the office? No. 
But we should have another talk soon. Yeah, whenever you say. Have a desired security team called Counterforce. The house is like a fortress. Use the alternate plan. Good. I told you, the alternate's better plan anyway. I'm sorry to have kept you two after office hours, but I just can't seem to shake the notion that there's some kind of an inside connection here. Well, how about if I check out everyone close to Abbott? It's a good idea. Why don't you start with Mrs. Abbott? She's not much older than his daughter. And why don't I work on Abbott's business partner, Frank Bishop? <laughs> Barnaby Jones, investigations, may I help you? Uh, yes, could you hold on, please? Steve McShane. Hello, Steve. Dad couldn't change Abbott's mind. The golf game's definitely on. We have a plan, but we'd like your help. Well, tell your father thanks. It's nice to be needed. Sure thing. Could you be out here before daybreak? I'll be there. Thanks. The counterforce folks need me out at the Abbott place before sunrise. I guess I better get home and try to get some sleep. Oh, that's a shame, Barnaby. I was kind of hoping we could all go out to dinner together. Well, uh, you two go. I'll have to take a rain check. Oh, too bad, Barnaby. You're gonna miss a royal spread, you know. Uh, a couple of dancing girls, a lot of laughs, a glass of the grape, my treat. Jedediah, did you come into a recent financial windfall? No, actually, I was planning on tapping the petty cash drawer, but Betty tells me it's empty, so I was uh, wondering, could you loan me 20 bucks? That kitchen is like a restaurant. The cook asked me my favorite food. I said, prime rib. Are you ready for this? Oh. <laughs> Starving? Medium rare. I saw you checking the monitor. Oh, I just saw Casey come in with Abbott's car. I don't believe what he can do in just a few hours. Hey, y'all. <laughs> dog, look here. Well, we burn rubber right through dinner time, and I am real peckish. Peckish doesn't seem to quite get it. Dog hungry's more like it. Wait, you mean the same for me? Well, I was thinking of breaking my diet, you know, just for tonight. I can't let you do that, kid. You got more curves than the Monaco Grand Prix, and I hate to see you change that, right, Steve? Couldn't have said it better myself, Hot Wheels. <laughs> you guys are all heart. <laughs> Wine, anyone? Um, I'm afraid we're gonna have to pass, Mrs. Abbott. Uh, some of this machinery gets a little psychedelic if you mix it with alcohol. Don't despair, Lauren. I'll join you. It's too good to waste, and so are you. <laughs> Oh, that muster wheel's got you off balance, good buddy. 
Why don't you try this chair for size, huh? I can't take the drop on duty, but I sure can propose a toast. To the Confederate States and all ladies north and south. Why not? You know, I'd say that Counterforce has this place well covered. How's that alarm system work? Uh, it works on body heat. People only. Animals have different temperatures. My wife said that in the event of an alarm, we're all supposed to come running into here. It's the command post. It's easier to protect you if you're all together. I'll tell you what. <clears throat> Why don't you just concentrate on my father-in-law? The rest of us can take care of ourselves. I don't know what's the matter with Alan tonight. The rest of us are grateful for what you're doing. Well, maybe you could talk to him, explain to him that it's our job to see that none of you gets taken hostage and used against your husband. He's so young, how can you know so much about protecting people? Well, I spent a year training with anti-terrorist experts overseas. Teams like the GSG-9 in West Germany, the Syret in Israel. Sounds frightening. I'd like to hear all about it. But Charlie's probably wondering what's keeping me. Could we talk more tomorrow? Anytime. Don't you think Steve's a little young for that rich married lady? No. His body may be 26, but... His soul's over 100. Ask any of them girls in that singles apartment he lives in. Hey, now look, if somebody wants to talk, we're supposed to listen, right? Can I help it if it's painless? Thank you, no, Kathy. I understand that your partner, Frank Bishop, is an electronics genius. That's right, but he can't sell a glass of water in the Sahara Desert. But lately, he's been sticking his oar into the business end. Well, maybe I could have a chat with him. On a family level, get him off your back. Well, I think Alan could be a real help to you, Daddy, if you'd only give him the chance. I know. Alan and I are going to have another talk later. Well, it's about that time now. Uh, Mr. Abbott, uh, I'd like to have a word with you. I hope you're not going to try to convince me not to go. That subject's been exhausted. Well, in that case, I'll just see you safely on your way. I wish you wouldn't humiliate me by interfering. I was only trying to help. I don't need help. Look, my parents didn't have dime one. I got out of that neighborhood and through an Ivy League college on my own hook. I already talked to him yesterday. Well, he said he'd go easier on you, and I... That doesn't work. You've done that a dozen times. Look, I'm an idea man, and he's frozen in his ways. He just wants me out of the picture. Alan, he likes to blow off steam, that's all. You're my husband. He wouldn't fire you. Oh, yeah? Why do you suppose I split to go skiing on my own? I had to get my head straight because he laid it out for me. Either I punch a clock like the rest of the jerks and do things his way, or I'm through. somewhere for a while, okay? Just the two of us. I'd love that. Anywhere today. You comfortable back there, sir? 
Not bad, considering I had to rise and shine at four this morning. Uh, you better tighten your seatbelt, because things could get rough. Oh, they're coming now. Looks like a driver and one passenger. All right, now, now I'm, I'm going to slow down now. And we can get a look at their faces, huh? Extra ton of armor and that fastback's cooking on a custom engine. Maybe we better stop running and start fighting. Mr. Jones, you talk like Robert E. Lee now. I can't see! Hit the brakes! there. Don't take it so hard, Casey. You saved our bacon. But I think we're all wrong about one thing. They're not trying to kidnap Abbott. They're trying to kill him. As soon as I got your radio call, I pulled Abbott off the course. You both all right? Uh be a lot better if we nail them, just didn't have enough car on her. You give me an even chance, and I'll catch anything on the ground that don't bite. Did you uh, explain to Mr. Abbott the assassination aspect? He did. And I owe you and KC an apology, Mr. Jones. I may be a fool at times, but I don't equate a game of golf with human lives. Did you get a good look at them? Yes, but they were wearing masks. Same kind you said they were wearing in your office. How about the car's license number? There was something smeared all over the license plate. In other words, you came up empty. Not exactly. We've got photographs front, rear, and side, including infrared. You ought to be able to identify that car. When you finish the car, Casey, relieve Kim at the command post. I want her to get this film in the darkroom right away. Right. Look at this. The infrared pulled out the license number. While it was still in the soup, I ran it through the PD. Ten to one, it's a stolen plate. What else? Where was it stolen? Why? Well, sometimes uh, criminals have a habit of stealing license plates in their own part of town. This comes from a vehicle in the Belmont district. Barnaby, Betty and I were really worried when Mr. McShane called. Why didn't you tell us you were going to sit in for Abbott? Well, I didn't know it myself until I got there and Steve asked me to. Then he wouldn't let us tell anyone, not even Abbott's family. Just a precaution, uh, Jedediah, Kim, Steve, this is my cousin, Jedediah Romano Jones. All right, JR. Hi. You know, Barnaby, I think I ought to devote a little more time to this case. 
Uh, later, Jedediah. What do you got on uh, Lauren Abbott? She's wife number two. They were married last summer, about three years after his first wife passed away. Anything on the inheritance angle? Well, I had to uh, call in a few favors, but I did find out that if anything happens to Abbott, or if the marriage is dissolved, Mrs. Abbott stands to get a cool million, that's all. The bulk of the estate will go to his daughter. You know, I think I'm moving the wrong social circles. <laughs> well, the point is that, that Mrs. Abbott stands to gain very little from her husband's death. I figured she'd be in the clear when I saw her expression when uh, Mr. Abbott returned safely this morning. Uh, Kim, uh, doesn't this green aura in the infrared picture suggest that the car was once painted a metallic green? Well, I see you're into photography, Barnaby. You kidding? You could write a book. There's something else I found in this shot. You can barely make out the number six on the door. Well, you know, that looks like a, a racing number of some kind. That's a high-performance racing tire there. Hey, you're right, JR. Look, there are roll bars inside the car. Well, KC said that the driver was an expert. Uh, he was wearing driving gloves with the knuckles cut out, which is a fad among West German race drivers. These could be international terrorists. Well, sure, it all adds up. Look, that stain from the shoe scraping we had analyzed comes from West Germany. And that cigarette tobacco you found is Turkish, all right, from a popular European brand. With all these pieces, you can't write it off as coincidence. Kim, let's go after the racing angle. Why don't you uh, jump into some cutoffs and have Casey give you a little tour around the local stock car racing tracks? Well, would you like to come along? Uh, no thanks. Jedediah and I have got to run down some other leads. Yeah, but if, if you're developing film next time, call me. I'd like to look at your darkroom technique. Later, Jedediah. <laughs> Later. Well, hey, Casey, what's a good word, man? Well, every day's a holiday, every meal's a banquet. Good buddy, how you doing? Okay, where you been, Casey? <laughs> oh, he's been pushing choppers and dune buggies all over that desert until I swear I'm in sand right up to my... Easy, honey. Harvey, I, uh, need some information. I've been checking around the other tracks, but so far, zip. Well, I owe you, shoot. Well, I was street dragging this cracker driver a metallic green fastback with a number six on the side. Yeah. And I had him clean, but then he threw a wheel into me, and I spun into a pole, and now that boy's gonna pick up the tab. Hey, man, there's a lot of number sixes around. Yeah, but this guy wears those, those knuckle-out gloves, you know? Yeah. With, uh, you know, accent, like German or something. Yeah. Well, wait a minute. I think I might know one guy. His, uh, his name is uh, Hans Mueller. What else you know about him? Well, not a lot. Showed up out of nowhere a few months back. Won a couple of swift races and then stopped coming out. Like you. <laughs> Can you help me find him? Well, I can make a couple of phone calls. There's some cats who worked on his car, might have his address. How about right now? <sighs> Where'd you say you were in sand up to? Right up to my... Yeah, her knees. <sighs> Start yeah. dialing, good buddy, will you? Take it easy, what do you mean? <laughs> okay. Your secretary said you were only interested in employees who had left the firm in the last year and might bear a grudge, and who lived in the Belmont area. That is correct, Mr. Bishop. Well, according to our personnel files, these are the only two. Claire Andrews, secretary. And she works at a local bank now. She was a little bitter when she left, but uh, we gave her a good recommendation. What about this uh, Tag Hooper? He was in customer relations. We let him go about three months ago. For what reason? He had a prison record. Well, that in itself didn't cost him his job. It's a fact he lied about it on his application. I think I'll go see if Mr. Hooper still resides at the same address. Thanks for your help. You're quite welcome. Well, I knew we were going to see each other again, but this is ridiculous. We haven't been here five minutes. Well, at least we're all on the same wavelength. 
How'd you get a line on Hooper? Who's Hooper? We've been tracking a good old German boy named Mueller, the guy that owns the Fastback. Well, looks like we're all on the right track. Trouble is, uh, we're late. They've cleared out lock, stock, and barrel. talked it over and we're cutting out. Yeah. We did not agree to take on an expert security force. We wouldn't have to if you hadn't blown your chance at Abbott's office. <laughs> That's easy for you to say. We get caught and I'm looking at a return trip to the joint. Hans could be shipped back to West Germany to face a half a dozen murder charges. I'd never make it to court. Well, comrades would kill me. Because you know too much? Nine. Because I kept the half a million dollars ransom from a kidnapping in Austria. Should have lasted me a lifetime. I lasted in two weeks at the tables in Monte Carlo. And all friends found me, and I ran. Listen, I want to help. Like I told Tag when I phoned to warn you guys, Counterforce has photographs of your car that'll lead right to you. You got to get out of the state. And that takes money. You will give it to us. We earned it. Now listen, I don't have any money to give you, even if I wanted to. But I'll be rolling in it if you guys waste Abbott. My wife's his sole heir. He's telling it like it is, Hans. I've known him since college. He never had a dime. Even if we were stupid enough to try again, where would we do it? The house. You're out of your tree. You told us the house was like a fortress. It is. And that can work for us. Kim lifted some clean prints from the apartment. We sent them and everything else we have on Miller by courier to GSG-9 in Berlin. Well, if he's wanted in Germany for terrorist activities, the chances are he entered this country illegally. If we can document that, we can bring federal agents into the case. It takes so much time, Steve. With these people loose, I'm concerned about here and now. Abbott residence? Oh, hi, Betty. It's Steve. Hold on. I'm going to go touch base with Kim at the command post. Yeah, Betty, what is it? Well, Barnaby, you can scratch Frank Bishop as a suspect. His stock in the company is minimal. Also, he has no employment contract. If Abbott's heirs decide to sell, he could lose his job. You know, Barnaby, if, uh, if there is an inside link, we're down to Abbott's daughter and or her husband. Betty, has something been bothering me about Alan Rogers. I think I just found out what it is. That cast of his. What do you mean? Well, he either has the world's highest pain threshold or no pain. Uh, you think he may be hurt less than advertised? I'm not sure. But I want you to make some calls to Vail, Colorado, see if you can locate the doctor that treated him up there, and find out the exact nature of his injury. Can do. Bye-bye. And how long am I going to be cooped up here? Until Mueller and Hooper make their next move, or we catch up with them. Look, I know all the trouble I caused at the golf match, but I still have a business to run here. I, I can't keep postponing meetings. And I can't hold the meetings here with all your people crawling around the place. Well, I wish I had an answer for you, but all I can say now is your safety comes first. Thank you. My pleasure, ma'am. Southern chivalry is getting a little thick around here. Look, fella, I didn't mean to cut in. I just thought it might be difficult for you to get them being all stove up and all, you know? Yeah. Uh, I think I'll go for a walk out back. I could stand a little privacy for a change. Will you excuse me a moment? Hey, relax. He's out of line. Look, I'm going to go tell Kim he's headed for the woods. Otherwise, she'll think the system's been penetrated. All right? All right. Okay. How long has your uh, son-in-law been working for you? Uh, Alan? Uh... Well, ever since he married Kathy. 
I don't imagine he can do much work with that cast on his leg. Uh, with or without a cast, he's been a major disappointment to me. Not having a son, I always presumed whoever Kathy married would someday head up Teletex Electronics. And does Roger know you feel that way? Yes, I had to step on him pretty hard recently. I told him if he was going to stay with the company, he'd have to straighten up his act. Did anything in particular prompt this conversation? He misused his corporate credit cards. I had to take them away from him. Even used one to pay for a bureau up in San Francisco. I'm still worried Kathy might find out about it. Excuse me. Betty just phoned. She said she talked to the doctor who took care of Rogers at Vail. Guess what? Abbott's son-in-law did not have a broken leg. Just sprained his ankle, but he insisted on a cast. Now, there's something else. Betty got a call from Frank Bishop. He uh, checked further into personnel and thought you might be interested to know that Tag Hooper was recommended by Rogers. <laughs> supposed to be. Hey, wait for it. Let's roll. Counterforce. Now, they're supposed to be protecting all of us. Hey, you know, there's a guy shooting at me. You better get down right now. He's probably watching us right this second. Come off it, Rogers. Where's the gun? Gun? Me? What are you talking about? You think I have a gun? All right, we can find it later. Let's go. No, uh -huh. you better back off, pal. Because I'm not going anywhere with you. Hold it! I think you better go with him, Rogers. Your two friends are waiting for you back at the house. I logged three hard months with GSG-9 in West Germany, but I have to come all the way back home to capture a member of the Bader meinhof gang. Hey, you know, but what's unreal to me is how Rogers could flip out so far, especially with a wife like Kathy. But then I never could understand you college folks, not even you two rascals. <laughs> Barnaby, I've been thinking. Why don't you bring your office into counterforce? You handle the investigations, and we'll take care of the security. Huh? That's fine. Thank you. Well, it's very flattering, John. You have a great bunch of people here, and I've never seen a better technical setup. Um, I've learned some things the last few days. So have we. And with all this hardware, we've been overlooking a basic element. 
the gut instinct and know-how that comes from experience. With you on the team, we'd have it. It's tempting. You've heard the expression, uh, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. I've always liked to run my own shop. But uh, maybe we can work together on something else sometime. Uh, I have a feeling that uh, one of the Joneses may be spending a lot of time studying Counterforce's new methods. <laughs> Close, but not quite yet. You see, I think the real reason is that I'm going to need protection from a beautiful blonde lady in my favorite Italian restaurant. <laughs> You're on, JR. We have to start by changing your life patterns. I am dying for a prime rib. And I know a place that has the biggest cut in town. Very expensive.